Last time we talked about reflection off of shiny surfaces like those of mirrors, and today we're going to talk about reflections further, but off of different kinds of surfaces, things that aren't necessarily smooth and shiny like mirrors, but rather day-to-day -day objects. I'd like to start with a photograph again, and here's a picture of a building or a set of buildings in New York City. Once again, it looks like the sun is off to the our upper left here. This is the morning sun, and we're standing down at street level. And one can see where the sun is coming in and reflecting down light down to us. And what's interesting about this is these three different uh, wings of this building are facing in three different directions. And yet we see light coming from this reflecting down to us. We see light reflecting from this wing coming down to us. And we're light reflecting from this wing and coming down to us. If these are all mirrors, if they were completely smooth surfaces, and this was a, a, a kind of reflection like we would expect off of mirrors, Maybe only one of these would be reflecting the glare directly into our eyes, but it looks like in all three cases uh, that's happening, that we're receiving light rays from the sun no matter what angle is coming into the, the, the building and no matter what angle we are standing. In fact, if we were to stand over here to the left further, over to the right further, I don't believe for a minute that one of these wings of the building would look dark. In fact, I think it would look just as bright. So it's, it's a clearly different kind of reflection uh, than it is off of mirrors. It's worth calling attention a little bit to how light ref, uh, gets to us, and this is a topic that uh, we've not covered in great detail, but it's, it's important to think about the process of seeing. When we look at some object in a room, let's say this flower right here, what we're saying is that light is reaching us, so light coming from that flower goes into our eyes. That's the process of seeing. But where does that light come from? It's not like this flower is a big flashlight and is emitting light in all different directions for us to see. In fact, this light is, is coming from that flower by way of something else, like this outside window and the sun, uh, which is reflecting light off of that, that flower into our eyes. So it's important to think about the three steps of this process. There is a source of light in this picture. It's sort of implicit. It's the sun that's outside, or it's the lights overhead in this room. But those are acting as the source of light this flower is re merely redirecting that light into our eyes. It's a very mo common misconception among small kids that if we were to turn all the lights out in a room, they would still be able to see that flower. It might look more dim, but they would th still think they'd see it. And that's a very understandable misconception because if we turn the lights out, we still are, are used to seeing things just fine. We can navigate our bedrooms at night and on our way to the kitchen to get a drink of water. But in reality, very few of us have experienced total darkness. And there's always a little bit of light in the room, even at night here on Earth, because there's stars, or there's the moonlight, or there's street lights outside. And what we're seeing is still that kind of reflected light off of things that we're trying to navigate around. Very few of us have the experience of being in pitch black. So as we talk about light and its behavior, it's important to think about uh, the different kinds of actors in the stage here. There's a source, something like a flashlight, or the sun, or a lamp in the ceiling, or uh, the projector light right here, or this projector right ab above me, all of these are considered sources of light. They are producers of light energy, maybe coming from electrical energy or from fusion energy. Something has converted uh, some other form of energy into light, and that is now beaming off in all different dir directions. There are b objects that are reflectors of light, like the flower that I mentioned, or my shoes, or the walls of this room, all of those are reflecting light uh, from a source. And there are other bodies which are absorbers of light. And the reason some things look of different colors is because some of the light of different wavelengths uh, is absorbed. And there are things that are transmitters of light. Those would be things that we would consider to be clear, like glass. It's something that uh, allows light to pass through undeflected. And finally, there are the receivers of light, the things like our eyes, the observer in any picture, uh, the one that's going to be taking that light energy and registering it in our minds. So I want us to keep track of all of these steps in a process because they're quite important. If we had some round ball here and it was just made of plastic, it was not a shiny mirrored ball, the process of light getting to us from, let's say, the sun or from a flashlight, how would we see this light? Well, it's important to think about all the kinds of reflections that take place off of this ball. This light ray is going to hit that ball and come in right there at a certain angle. 
And yet we know that because we see the ball that that light ray gets to our eyes. As does this light ray here might hit the, the ball at a different place and also gets to our eyes. But notice that the angles don't have to be the same because this is a big round spherical ball. And this light ray, well we can see that part of the ball too. That means that that light ray is coming in at yet a different angle and leaving at a different angle and still gets to our eyes. So the kind of reflection off of a ball like this is very different from the kind of reflection we're used to off of mirrors. In fact, if we ask what would we see, well we would see a picture that looks something like this. Maybe part of the ball is illuminated most strongly by the, li by the light. In other words, the light rays are most successfully getting to our eyes. And the stuff on the back side of the ball, well, the light never gets to it because it's reflecting off the front side of the ball. So this might appear dark to us. But the important part is that all of this area is reflecting light and getting into our eyes. And it's happening at a variety of different angles because this ball is pointing in a different number of different directions depending on where you're hitting the ball.